What is the best Bible version for 2020? I mean like the best of the best of the best, sir. Today, a fun and lighthearted conversation about your favorite Bible versions and the Bible version I think is the best for 2020. All that coming up in just a minute. But first this. Hey, 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 what is going on, everyone? Welcome back for another video. My name is Jason Bonickson, if this is your first time here, and I am a Christian YouTuber and a pastor and an entrepreneur, and I am on a mission to help you see yourself as valued and as worthy and as wanted, even when other people can't or won't see you that way. Now, if that sounds good to you, then start right now by subscribing to the channel and ringing that little notification bell, and that way you won't miss anything. Okay, so what's this best Bible version of 2020? Let's look at it right now. You guys should see the ottoman sitting in front of me. I have 11 different paper Bibles sitting on it. Some are hardcover, some are soft, some are in foreign languages, some are very close to the modern vernacular that we speak here in North America and the United States. A lot of different versions, a lot of different interpretations, different translations, if you will. Which one is best for you? That's really the question of the day, isn't it? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. And I want you to stick around all the way to the end because at the end, I'm gonna tell you the best translation for 2020 that I think you should be reading. But you gotta stick around all the way to the end to hear that answer and it might surprise you. So, how did this conversation start? I made a post the other day on Facebook and I asked a simple question. What Bible translation do you love the most? And I've got about 29, 30 replies. People are still replying. And some of the answers are ones that I was expecting to hear. And then there were some answers that I'm like, I have never heard of that Bible version ever before. But it really begs the question, when you're on a quest to find the best Bible version for, for what you want and what you need, what do you choose? It's like going on a quest for the Holy Grail, right? And you don't wanna, you don't wanna choose wrong because you might end up like the Knights of the Round Table. I don't know that. <laughs> you get what I mean? It can be a quest and there's a lot of different translations. Which one's best for you? And let me ask a question just for fun, for silly, and put a comment down below. Which translation are you using right now? Which one do you love the most? Give me a comment down below in the comment section of the video. And oh, by the way, if you're liking what you're hearing already, if you're having fun already, give the video a thumbs up, give it a like. Let me know that this is the kind of content that you wanna hear more of. Okay, here we go. So what's the best one for you? Well, it really depends on your context. What are you looking at doing? Maybe you just wanna have some quiet time, a little personal devotion. Well, maybe you, in that case, wanna read a version that's more of the language that you would normally speak in. Maybe you're wanting to really drill down deep. You wanna understand the exact context, the exact wording, to know what every single word means that the original Bible authors used. Well, that's a different context altogether. Whether you wanna look at something a little bit more scholarly or something a little bit more common to your tongue might depend on the Bible version that you're gonna choose. And oh, by the way, we're primarily talking about English speaking Bibles because while well, 78% of my YouTube audience of you guys live here in the United States in North America, but that also means that 22% of you live outside of North America, you live in another country, and maybe English isn't your primary language, maybe you speak another language too, and maybe your Bible, your interpretation, your translation, is in another language. Let me know in the comments section below if that's true. I'd love to find out where you're from and what Bible translation you're reading from as well. But again, everything is contextualized, right? So if you're really wanting an intense Bible study, you really wanted to drill down deep, you wanna get close to the original language of let's say the New Testament, well then you would wanna know the Greek. Well, for most of us, the Greek is no pun intended, but it's all Greek to me, right? but this is a Greek New Testament. I had to have this for seminary. I had to take two years of biblical Greek and it wasn't easy, y'all. I'm very, I'm pretty much a right-brained guy and Greek is best for left-brained people. It's very logical. It's very structured, very ordered mm -mm 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 type of thing, very rule-based. And so if you're an engineer, you're an accountant, you might be able to be able to pick up the Greek fairly easily. And if you want to understand the original intention of the writers of the Gospels, then the Greek is a good thing to know. But let's say you don't want to learn Greek, right? You don't want to take that time. I get that. Most of us don't want to do that. What do you choose if you really want to intent study? Well, the original English translation 
we call today the King James Bible, the King James Version. I got one right here. Now, this is my daughter's. I'll be honest, I don't prefer the KJV because, well, I don't speak the old King's English. It's beautiful, it's poetic, I'll give you that. But the these, the thous, the those, the thys, I don't get it. I find it beautiful, but it doesn't sync with my soul. I just, when I read that version, I get tripped up, I stumble, and I find myself frustrated. So I don't prefer this version, but there are millions of people who do because they love the prose. They love the fact that they grew up with it. They just like that version. They think it fell from heaven or, or whatever have you. It didn't, by the way. Um, but they find it the most accurate. And I would disagree with that. But that's their belief and that's okay. Now, if you're looking for something as close to the original language, at least in the New Testament that you can get, it'd be the New American Standard Bible. And that would be true for both the Hebrew and the Greek. The NASB, the New American Standard Bible, is probably the most wooden, the most literal of all the translations out there. Now, I don't have one personally in my collection at home, but I do have one on my Bible app, so if I want to read the NASB, I can. A close second, a runner-up to that, would be the English Standard Version or the English Standard Bible. I got two copies right here. This one, a little one, and this one. This is my wife's. This was mine until my daughter hijacked it and stole it, which is okay. She's allowed. I got plenty here in the house. It's a great version. I read it every single day, and I actually pair it with one other Bible that I'm going to tell you about very shortly, like pairing a good fine wine with a cheese or something like that. You get the analogy, right? But it's a great version that it reads well in the modern English tongue, as good, in my opinion, as the King James Version, but more of our modern vernacular, but still sticking to the original intent of the original Greek. Now, if you're not looking for something that wooden like those, like those options, maybe you wanna move down the pipeline a little bit to something like the New International Version, probably the most popular Bible version out there today. The NIV Bible is great for Bible study. It's, it's an all around wonderful purpose Bible. Great for church, great for study, great for reading in your living room, wonderful for devotions here and there. I've got a lot of different NIV Bibles in my house. It's what I originally used and still look at it from time to time. I got, um, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at you, but I got this one right here. My father-in-law bought me over two decades ago. The thing is falling apart. It's highlighted in, it's scribbled in, it's underlined, it's written in with pencil. Some of the pages are really worn thin and, and some of them have torn. This Bible has gotten a lot of mileage and I still use it to this day. This is my wife's. I hijacked it off the end table. This is the one that she reads. You can see paper sticking out of it. She's got notes in here and she loves this Bible. Well, there's also another NIV. This one right here, the TNIV. I don't like it to be honest with you. Today's New International Version. They made it a little bit less gender specific, if you will. It's a politically correct version and I don't even look at it to be honest with you. I just assume throw it on the end table. It's not a good version in my opinion. That's me, that's my opinion. I'm gonna tell you my favorite reading Bible besides the ESV, the one that I pair like a fine wine with a cheese, and it's this one, the New Living Translation. Love it, love it, love it. Read it every single day. In fact, when I do Bible study every single day in the morning and the evening, I'm reading from this one and this one. Now, honestly, I'm not reading from the paper too much anymore. I use my Bible app, the YouVersion Bible app. But when I read a passage, I start out in the ESV. I wanna find out what's the original, closest contextual language to the original context of both the Hebrew and the Greek. So I read the ESV, but then I'll flip the translation. I'll flip the interpretation to the New Living Translation because it's closer to how I think. It's closer to how I speak. And it just gives me a little bit of a different vantage point, a different angle of what that passage, that story is all about, or that message. So it's a great way to round it off. And if I really wanna get a little bit more closer to our cultural today, maybe I'm gonna read the Message Bible, which gets further away from the original translation word for word, but looks more at a contextual type of thing, a good paraphrase of what was happening back in that context and putting it in a 
modern day situation, if you will. So there's a lot of different options from very literal to parenthetical, if you will. And those options are available for you. And now you're probably like more confused on, thanks, Jason, which one should I really choose? Which is the best version for me for 2020? And here's the answer. You've been waiting for this all along. It's the one you have on your end table. It's the one you've been reading. It's the dusty Bible you have on your bookshelf that maybe you haven't pulled down for a while that you need to read. It's the one on your phone app. The best Bible version for 2020 isn't some new hot version that just came off the press, in my opinion. It's the Bible version that you have in front of you. It's the Bible you have sitting on your end table. Because here's ultimately what's most important. It's a relationship with God. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what's most important. The Bible is God's story of him breaking into humanity and redeeming humanity all the way from Adam and Eve through you today and those who have yet to be born. And so no matter the version that you're reading, if as long as it gets you closer to God, that's what's most important. That's the best version for you is whatever gets you closer to God. Whether it be devotion time in the morning or in the evening, Bible study at church, online church, going to church and worshiping, you read that version in front of you. That's what you read. That's the best version for you in 2020. Was that what you were expecting? I bet not. I bet I surprised a bunch of you. Let me know in the comment section down below if I just did a rope-a-dope and surprised you. And if maybe I've changed your mind on what's something that you want to take a look at, let me know that down below too. And again, I still want to know what Bible version do you love the most? What translation do you love the most? Let me know in the comment section down below. Really, come on guys, let's interact with this. Y'all, if this content has been good for you, if you like this content, please give it a thumbs up and certainly share the video. If you haven't already, I want to encourage you right now, smash the subscribe button. I mean, just crush it. Subscribe to this channel. Ring that little notification bell. And that way, when I post brand new videos just like this, you'll already be on the community and you'll already be ready to go. Until I get to talk with you again, check out some of these videos up here. They might challenge you. And until I get to see you again, I pray that you're doing very, very well and that you're drawing closer to God. Until I get to see you again, be blessed.